Yeah, but you're in there with us, my husband and I are with him. Well, welcome back to Black Renaissance. With us now is a quite remarkable woman of many trades. Jewel Taylor Gibbs is a celebrated professor of social welfare at UC Berkeley, a noted clinical psychologist and an author, an author of five books. But she's here to talk about her latest book, Destiny's Child, Memoirs of a Preacher's Daughter. So welcome. So great to be with you here. Thank you. It's good uh, to be here. Your fifth book. How long did it take to put this? It's a, it's a lofty ambition, putting a memoir together. About seven years, yeah. yes. That was my project after I retired from UC Berkeley for 20 years. And I decided I needed something to really keep my mind active. And uh, that book did take about seven years with uh, all the various uh, versions of it and the photographs and researching the family history and going back seven generations on my family tree, which uh, was very much like uh, Carl Lumley talked about. Well, you know, every book for a author I know takes you on a journey, a journey of discoveries, this one especially. So what surprised you about the things you learned and found out and discovered about your family? Well, that's a good question because as children, my father had told us a little bit about his mother who died young and that my grand grandmother was a free black and we weren't too interested and didn't know exactly what that meant. Yeah. Uh, but uh, as an adult, I decided I wanted to find out more about my grandmother. So I had a s several surprises that she was from a family of free blacks in Virginia. And h they had been free at least since 1745. I have records going back yeah. to 1745. I found out that my great grandfather had fought in the Civil War, which again had been mentioned, but I hadn't really remembered. And some of three of his ancestors had fought in the Revolutionary War, all as free blacks. And so I'm very proud to be able to pass that information on to my grandchildren. And was it tough doing the research? Was it tough to get all it that information? It was very difficult, but uh, there are a lot of resources. And, yeah. you know, I used the famous Ancestry.com. And the Mormon Church has wonderful family libraries, uh, which was an excellent resource. And then actually hired a professional genealogist to track down the people that I couldn't find in the census. And so it took a while, but I was able to reconstruct a family tree going back seven generations. Good Lord. Uh, I mean, a great thing to have now for your family yes. and generations to come. Yes. You know, preachers, you're, you know, your father was a preacher. Uh, they're great at telling stories to the congregations and sharing so much yes. with the congregations. But did your father share stories with you. I mean, yes, did he, he did. share much? And he was also a great role model because my father was very active in civil rights and politics. Yeah. Uh, so I grew up in a household of activists. My grandfather had been active in Washington, D.C. My father was in Connecticut, vice chair of the Connecticut Democratic Party, uh, worked for all the presidents since uh, Roosevelt. And so I was brought up in a household to be yeah. very active and very engaged in politics. And uh, through my life, I've met such interesting people through my father and my relatives, including Thurgood Marshall, yeah. who came to my home when I was 11 and uh, helped my father start a chapter of the NAACP in my small town of Ansonia, Connecticut. Incredible. And then later in college, I met Martin Luther King. Well, there, I was going to say, <laughs> literally, you know, you have a connection to preachers, but yes. a love interest with Martin Luther well, King. Well, I'm not sure I would call it love, but yeah. we were friendly, yeah. and our families uh, sort of uh, got us together. Yeah. Both parents knew each other, and uh, they sort of set us up. I was right. at Radcliffe, and he was at Boston University School of Theology. So we dated for several months, but... Yeah. Uh, Mainly he took me to church, and after a while I said, you know, Martin, if we're going to continue to see each other, let's do something fun, like a movie sure. or a party. So did you, so, never, uh, did you never get to go to the movies with Yes, him? I did, I did. And uh, then uh, this uh, relationship lasted about three months, and then I met another young man, and about the same time he met Coretta. So we continued our friendship. Yeah. Uh, he married uh, soon, about a year later, but we continued our friendship until he died. I have to ask you about the movie Selma, an extraordinary piece of work. Mm -hmm. uh, to watch that film, because you know and knew so many of those characters, how was that as a piece of filmmaking for you to sit back and see part of your story and the story of those you know on screen? It was very emotional because my father knew many of the older ministers and I knew some of the younger ministers. Yeah. Uh, I knew Reverend Lowry, for example, uh, was a role model for me too. 
and I knew Reverend C.T. Vivian, I knew uh, Reverend Andrew Young. All of those people had been, uh, I had met during my, you know, adulthood, and my father had known some of the older ministers. So it was very emotional seeing that film and sort of reliving that history for me and, my, and for my husband. Yeah, and of course, David Oyelowo should have been nominated, in my opinion, for an Oscar. Uh, he was so incredible mm -hmm. as MLK mm -hmm. for you as someone who did know Martin Luther King. How was his performance? I thought he was quite good, and he reminded me a lot of the young Martin that I knew. And uh, the uh, woman reminded me a lot, his wife, of Coretta. She looked very much like Coretta when I knew them, and they were quite young when I met them. Both were graduate students. Yeah. So it brought a lot back to me, a lot of happy memories. And, and you grew up where? Connecticut. Connecticut, but the Bay Area was home for more than 40 years. For more than 45 years. Yeah. My husband was a professor at Stanford and I was a professor at Berkeley. That's what brought us out here yeah. to Stanford. Uh, and I know your husband, you've been together for <laughs> a, a, very long time. a very long time. Yes. <laughs> uh, what, what makes that marriage work? I think that I always say you have to have uh, several things in a marriage. You really have to be able to communicate, you have to be able to cooperate, and you have to be able to uh, really find ways of letting each person be his or herself yeah. and uh, to be able to manage conflict mm -hmm. well. And I think we've been able to do those things. Uh, your book shares the history of your family, uh, but part of your history and your story uh, is what's happened in, the re in recent years, President mm -hmm. Obama becoming uh, president, and you were there for both inaugurations, correct? Yes, well, the first one. My son was very active in the campaign, yeah. and he enlisted us to help raise money for uh, President Obama. So when they had the first inauguration, all there were in my family two sons who worked for the campaign. My husband and I raised money, and uh, we even took our little grandson, who was not quite two, so we had a wonderful time. Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. Uh, for more on all our guests here today, uh, please go to our website, cbssf.com.